like the championship fight itself, the sandy track itself with Massachusetts is unpredictable. The terrain shifts from lap to lap, always changing, morphing each obstacle, every turn into a monster, ready to take your season away. For the three men hoping to capture the 450 crown, this is the season's wildcard race. Survive Southwick and stay in the battle for two more rounds. Win at the famous MX338 and carry bragging rights that you have conquered America's toughest motocross track. Gate drop for round 10 of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship is next. From a very rainy Moto X338 facility in Southwick, Massachusetts, it's the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championships Rockstar Energy Drink Southwick National. Let's take a look at the highlights of the first 450 class moto, which took place earlier today. It looks like the number two of Ryan Villapoto is going to get the whole shot, but he gets bumped and banged around by Justin Barsha. And the number one of Ryan Dungey is going to emerge with the lead with his teammate Brett Metcalf right behind. A rare hole shot this year for Dungey. Barsha, though, was not done. He was running in fourth behind Metcalf after Villapoto got by them. Here they go, a great duel for the number three spot between the 24 and the 17, and Barsha is going to secure that position and try to run Villapoto down. Then this kid, Michael Satile, the fastest qualifier today, a local product, went down, and then Barsha was out of the race, apparently with bike problems, dropping him from third to about last. And he wasn't the only one. Chad Reed then went out with bike problems of his own, and we believe the points he lost in this moto may essentially eliminate Reed from championship contention. No such trouble for Dungey. Villapoto gave him a run late in the moto, but the number one holds on to be number one in Moto One, Ryan Dungey taking your first race today. Well, over right now, welcome to Southwick. Jason Wigan, of course, joined by four time AMA national champion Jeff Emick. Let's give you the big picture storylines we're going to follow from the sand track here at Moto X 338 in Southwick. First of all, Ryan Villapoto is coming in here with the momentum. Not only the series points lead, but victory at our last round of the tour in upstate New York. He swept both motos. Second in the first moto today, he continues his strong riding. But looking for answers, Justin Barsha, Chad Reed, not what they wanted in the first moto this afternoon when their bikes couldn't get them to the finish line. They've got to figure something out and figure something out in a hurry. They want to get back in contention. And Hurricane Irene making a surprise appearance in the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship. And she might wreak more havoc on the field than any of the riders. It definitely will have an impact on the racing today because it's been raining for a long time. So, Jeff, we throw it to you. We're on a sand track, which is ordinarily rough, ordinarily slippery, very difficult. Now we're throwing Hurricane Irene and the rain in the mix. How difficult is it going to be today to just get to the finish line? Well, it, it has proved to be difficult for some riders, uh, either uh, by their own riding or uh, by the machine. And so we've taken a racetrack that already taxes the body, already taxes the machine. It's really tough on the equipment and it's made it even tougher. The rain coming down gives you problems with the goggles and water and all that getting in there. Uh, water coming into uh, the machine through the air box, different things, you know, with, uh, with the bike. So it's been challenging all around, but we did see uh, the two title contenders, Ryan Villapoto and Ryan Dungey, both go at it. And Dungey had a great first moto. He was out front leading, but at the end of that first moto, Ryan Villapoto put on a real strong charge, but Dungey picked up two more points towards the championship. It's down to four. Yeah, and it sets the scene for what should be a great Moto2 between the two Ryans, and who knows who else can get in there. And for more information on this race, let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Aaron Bates, with a progressive pre-race report. Another huge upset as far as the championship goes. You can see behind me the Rockstar Makita Suzuki team is vigorously working, trying to get this bike, to get it prepared, get it down on the line. Ryan Dungey is actually down on the start gate right now, but you can see his mechanic and the whole team, Mike Gosler. They have put it together. They have pulled it apart. They tried starting it again. At this point, they've got it back apart. They are working and doing everything they can. They still have a few moments to get this bike down onto the start line before it's too late. His entire family is here. They're looking. Michelle and Troy are watching in a look of disbelief. Well, yeah, I don't remember ever a championship being possibly decided like this. There he is in the starting line. He has no idea what's going on. Well, I have actually been in this position uh, once before where I was on the line as the points leader and uh, the bike did not make it. And it was, uh, you know, um, an ignition problem. Now, at one point, this bike was running. 
and yeah. then it stopped, and so they took it back apart trying to figure out what's going on. And Dungey just no team, no bike. The entire crew is up there at the truck in the pits, and he uh, he's just he's prepping his gate perhaps to not even race. The championship could be slipping away from the team right now. Speed's coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. By the 2011 Toyota Tundra, one of the most capable half-tons ever. And by RockyMountainMC.com, your one-stop shop for parts, apparel, and accessories. RockyMountainMC.com, get ready. Get ready over here is the name of the game in the Rockstar Makita Suzuki pits. They are still trying to bolt Ryan Dungey's bike back together. They cannot get the engine running. There is your defending series champ. Only four points behind in the series. If he doesn't race this moto, championship could be gone, Jeff. Yeah, it, it very well could be. And you can see the urgency. Ryan is looking on, where is my machine? Unbelievable. Meanwhile, let's give you our uh, track map brought to you by Kawasaki and the 2012 KX450F. Fully equipped and race ready. Jeff, take us on a tour. I can tell you the track map that we have right now is one dimensional. <laughs> <laughs> Once the riders uh, hit the track after the gate drop, it is going to be very much be three dimensional. And uh, track is getting very wet. It's getting very rough. The soil here, when it gets really saturated, it becomes rutted as opposed to a nice, fluffy, sandy situation. So the bumps are going to form up much more of a choppy, small bump, square edge type of thing as opposed to a big, long sand whoop and roller. And we've also got rain coming down, although uh, usually the story is that sand tracks hold up better with rain than a hard pack track. Is that the case here? Uh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, this place can take a lot of rain, but where we will see a lot of water uh, uh, starting to uh, collect is at the bottoms of certain areas. When there's a, like a G out down there, uh, around the second turn, actually, we uh, talked during the uh, track walk yeah. that it could be a real problem area. Right. And uh, through the old finish line area where there's those deep dips. So we've got track conditions to keep an eye on, a very dynamic track that's going to change a lot, and of course, the dynamic championship chase, which has changed considering that Ryan Dungey won our first moto earlier today and may not be able to compete in our second moto. They're taking the bike off the stand, and that is the mechanic, Mike Gosler. I believe that that would mean they're ready to go down to the line. Is the bike running? Yeah, the bike is running. Mike Gosler, of course. Well, he's going to have to show Legendary some skills mechanic. himself right he's now. Gonna he's going to hustle. Get the machine down to the starting line. Uh, possibly even Ryan could make the um, uh, parade lap here. S -s -s true sense of urgency here for uh, Team Suzuki and Ryan Dungey and all the uh, people uh, involved in this, uh, you know, in this racing effort. The parade lap is optional. The riders don't have to take it. So if Dungey doesn't complete this uh, sight lap, that's not a problem. The issue is that he wasn't there with his bike on time when they selected their gate. So he will have the last gate selection. Explain that. And also, Jason, we walked the gate during qualifying yeah, practice. We'll I pointed out. out how when you are about the last 10 gates to the right, the, the, uh, it cuts in so hard that it's a real funnel and right. a vortex going to the first turn. If your 10 gates are out, so if you're lining up 30, to 40, which is where Dungey will be gate number 40. You really have no chance at getting the whole shot here. So this is going to drastically decrease his chances of getting a uh, good uh, start. Unbelievable. Dungey has the bike. He's rolled out on the racetrack. He's ready to go racing. Now he's got to overcome the bad gate pick. And where is he at mentally at this point? Well, the one thing that I believe that Dungey can count on is to rely on his team mm -hmm. to know that, OK, if this bike is on the track and if they gave it to me, it's 100% ready to go race. Right. So I don't have to be weary. I don't have to question whether or not something's going to go wrong on the bike. You know, should I back it off? Should I check it out? But he does have the advantage of being able to go out now for the parade lap and get a feel for it and just build that extra little bit of confidence that, okay, I'm ready to go. He's going to need it because this game pick is going to be a, a massive disadvantage for him. Barsha in the lead right now over uh, Brayton, Weimer, Villapoto, and uh, Dungey, meanwhile, the rule was he had to get out on the track before the leader crossed the finish line, and he and, and he uh, just made it out. So it's going to be wild here, the way this uh, the way this race is breaking down, with Dungey just trying to come through the pack 
and just try to score some points. So there is Dungey, and like you said, Jeff, he's got to hope that bike is 100% because the worst thing that can happen in a motocross race is that that bike cuts out on the face of a jump or a situation like that, even on a rough straightaway, you're in big trouble. Meanwhile, Justin Barsha out front on a very, very sloppy racetrack. There is Justin Brayton in the number two position. And there it is, Barsha Brayton. And this track, completely different than what we saw. You remember the highlights at the top of the show, the first moto? It looks nothing like that track. But Barsha being cheered around by the fans, he is a local favorite, not from uh, Massachusetts, but from uh, upstate New York. He has ridden here a lot. Jeff, you said the first time you ever saw Barsha ride was on this track. Yeah, and uh, it was a very similar situation. Uh, I was out here for a ride day. Um, I jumped out on the track with uh, all of the young kids on the 65s and 85s. And here was this kid, Justin Barsha, ripping around on this 85. And uh, he was incredibly fast. Uh, signed him to a deal at shift uh, the next day. And uh, so far, I mean, since that day, he has just completely uh, been one of the standouts uh, of the sport. Okay, so Brayton in second, you saw him. Jake Weimer's third, Villapoto fourth, and Les Smith in fifth. Barsha, unfortunately for him, not a factor for the overall win because his bike broke in moto number one. So he didn't score any points there. He's pulling away from Brayton at least early. You see the countdown clock at the top of the screen. 25 minutes and two laps left in this one. So it's very early into a 30 minute and two lap race. But for the moment at least, Barsha, well, he's in position to win his first ever moto on a 450. And that's pretty good because it's only his second race ever on a 450. So Barsha's lead is 5.4 seconds on Brayton. Weimer third, Villapoto could be looking good for the overall and to make up points in the championship because he is running fourth early. We're trying to figure out where Dungey is, 39th, when he came out after the gate drop. So Dungey, I guess at this point, his best hope would be to try to get into the top 20 and just score some sort of points. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and we apologize. We have uh, some technical difficulties here. And uh, oh, there, there is a Weimer I'm and uh, Filippoto mixing it up. Sorry to interrupt, Jeff. That is a battle for third between the teammates. And the Suzuki behind them is Metcalf. So a three rider duel, third, fourth, fifth. Weimer on the 32. There goes Filippoto, who's already totally covered in mud. And then it's a Metcalf right behind them. Yeah, but you can see right now with Villapoto uh, running up front, uh, running second now at this point, um, you know, he surely would have, have known what was going on, even though he just needs to focus on his own race. Oh, uh, Metcalf. What's going on with the uh, with uh, Ryan Dungey, uh, you know, um, uh, before the beginning of this moto. Oh, I'm sure he does. Meanwhile, it seems like every time we drop the gate in this series, you can count on a battle between the 32 and the 24. They seem to find each other every week. This week, they find each other in a battle for uh, uh, fourth with Villapoto in third, Brayton second, and Barsha in the lead. It's Metcalf and Weimer. And uh, you can see the riders, there's so much moisture on the track. Notice in these turns, oh, Weimer makes a little mistake, and that allows Metcalf to make the pass. And another update, Chad Reed, meanwhile, is in 34th with Dungey in 39th. So today, everything has been shaken up. If you're uh, Ryan Villapoto, you just got to try to get that thing to the finish, and you're going to gain huge points today. Reed is a victim of a first-turn crash, and we already know about Dungey's troubles. Wild day today at Southwick. We got a battle on our hands here at Southwick in the rain, the mud, the sand. Brett Metcalf on the 24. Rockstar Makita Suzuki takes a spot away for the Monster Energy Kawasaki of Ryan Villapoto. That is for third place. Metcalf rides well at this track. But when you see someone overtake your series points leader, Villapoto, you tend to think, hey, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. Villapoto is riding the race within the race. His championship rivals, Chad Reed and Ryan Dungey, have had horrible luck today. Your Villapoto, you're probably happy that you're just still running. Here's a replay of the pass, Jeff. Yeah, watch Metcalf around the outside, and he was pretty loose. Trying to make, he got the hops, trying to uh, drop down in there and take the inside line. See, Villapoto, at this point, he's, he's being really smart about this. He knows that uh, he doesn't need to get into uh, a personal battle with Metcalf. Um, he obviously has got the signal that there uh, was problems with Dungey. Reed is already so far back that it is really not a factor um, in the championship now. 
uh, at this point. So he needs to just have a good, solid top four, top five race and finish uh, finish this moto. And uh, he could have a pretty uh, substantial points lead by the time uh, he leaves here. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're Ryan Dungey, uh, you got to thank your teammate here, Metcalf, for at least taking a few points potentially away from Villaboto, but he's got to keep that bike upright. Obviously very deceiving how slippery this track is in spots. Yeah, and, and if you notice in the sections where it gets really wet, that's where it's really starting to rut up. But what I mean by rut is rather than there being a line that's a, you know, a foot or 18 inches wide of sand, like a fluffy sand turn, when you get where it's really wet, there'll be a rut that is literally only as wide as the rear tire, and the tire cuts in. Now, where it gets even more difficult, Jason, is where you get a wet section where it's just water all the way across because there's actually ruts zigzagging under that, but you can't see that. Dumbest Stuff on Wheels coming up. This is uh, Jeff Emick's favorite new show, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Dumbest Stuff on Wheels coming up uh, Wednesday, 8 uh, Pacific, or 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific on Wednesday. Dumbest Stuff on Wheels, it's an all-new episode. It's uh, downright outrageous situations, crashes, mishaps, craziest stuff you've ever seen caught on tape. So don't miss more painful lessons the hard way on an all-new Dumbest Stuff on Wheels. Yeah, see, and what they do a good job with on that show is they mix it up, you know, between sport bike riders and the kids on skateboards and cars and rednecks and all kinds of cool stuff going on. I hate to insult these guys. We might see some highlights from that show in this race. This track is so treacherous. These boys are just trying to do their best to keep the bikes upright and get to the finish. I believe that's got to be Ryan Villapoto's goal right now in, in uh, fourth. Here is Weimer in fifth. Michael Lessie sixth. Les Smith seventh. Jacob Morris in eighth, Marshall and uh, Dowd rounding out the top ten. Want to apologize for any technical difficulties we have. Of course, we are uh, near the eye of the hurricane, and we're not talking Bob Hanna in motocross terms. It's Hurricane <laughs> Irene here in the northeast at Southwick, just a few miles north of uh, Hartford, Massachusetts, and obviously the weather is uh, really having an impact on our show today and, of course, on the riders. Here is Alessi on the Red Bull KTM. And then Les Smith, who is the replacement rider for Davey Millsaps, who's out with a knee injury on the Muscle Milk Toyota Yamaha team, will come through next on the 44. So yeah. Smith is happy. Yeah, and it, yeah, he's putting in a great ride. And you see Alessi, look how rutted the track is getting. And uh, what I've noticed is that the bikes are really, the back of the bikes are really moving around left to right, especially when they get in those wet sections. And that's what I was talking about how you catch those ruts and certain things that maybe it looks like the track is this way, but then as the riders go over it, underneath it's got an edge that completely uh, squirrels you out. Jacob Morrison here in the uh, number uh, eight spot, and this track is known for this. Southwick is a type of track that breeds strange things. Not only the bike problems for uh, for uh, Dungey, got Robbie Marshall coming through here. You see a lot of privateers, a lot of guys who have ridden laps of this track put in great rides, and that's exactly what's happening. You got Morrison, who's from Wareham, Massachusetts. He's in seventh. You got Marshall, who's from Massachusetts as well. He's in the top ten. So as usual, Southwick, and here's their fave from Chicopee, oh, yeah. Mass, to 16 and John Dowd. So you're looking at three Massachusetts riders in the top 10 right now. Yeah. Dowd is in 10th, Marshall 9th, Morris in 8th. And, and you know what's ironic about this situation is, is these guys have probably raced a local, you know, you know, like NSEC, yeah. NESC, NESC yeah. race here uh, on a local level, you know, maybe a big money, a, you know, a purse race. Shane Sewell uh, just put the move situation. on Dowd, though. I want to give a shout out to the kid from Indiana. But yeah, I know what you're saying. These guys have raced local races, and I'm sure they've raced them in the rain before. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. Maybe even the snow up here, you know, in the winter time. But if you ever looked at the NESC schedule, it's like 100 events a year. So yeah, these guys are experienced. <laughs> but Sewell doing a great job here. Both the brothers, Shane and Travis Sewell, out here today. And there is Shane getting around Dowd. Now here's what's on the line for Dowd. He's trying to hold on to that national number 16. The rule is he has to score 25 points in this series every year to keep his national career number. He needs to basically finish 10th in the two motos today to secure 25 points. He is in 11th right now. And you know what? I, I believe on my my fantasy league on AllySports.com that yep. I have Travis Sewell ah. as part of my fantasy team. And it's Shane here running 11th this moto. That's what moto. you meant. Ah. You meant Shane. You meant Shane. So he's trying to put the pressure on Marshall, who is in ninth, Morrison in eighth. So the local folks 
who have decided to stick around in the tough weather have got some people to cheer for and some great things to cheer about. Stay with us. Day of drama here at Southwick and more has unfolded. Here is Chad Reed headed back to the pits with his mechanic Lars. Not sure what has happened there to the 22. That makes two DNFs for Chad Reed. When was the last time he ever, yeah. ever had a situation like that? He, he throughout his whole career uh, as a rider and even the equipment that he's been on, uh, I mean, he's been Mr. Consistent. Very few uh, mechanical problems. Very few races where he actually crashed out, even though he did crash out of the overall here um, a couple years ago, That's the true. year that he won the title. So Southwick, in general, has just not been kind to Chad Reed. Well, hasn't been kind to anybody. Justin Barsha, who is leading this moto right now, should be in position to win the overall for the afternoon if you count both motos. He was running third in the first moto earlier today, but then he ran into mechanical problems and his bike quit. So instead, he finished out of the points. So this kid is looking at potentially a moto victory, but not an overall. But I'll tell you what, if you're Justin Barsha, you'd be pretty pumped to win a moto anyway. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that any rider uh, has has won his opening uh, one this early. When, uh, on a 450? Up to the 450? Well, mid-season, certainly, I would think. Uh, yeah. You know, Ryan Villapoto won, went 1-1 one, one in his first 450 race, but that was at the beginning of the year when he had a whole year of uh, testing to get ready. But... Uh, I'm telling you, it's a lot different uh, for Barsha. He basically just jumped on this bike about three weeks ago. And what's interesting, he's subbing for the injured Trey Kennard. That is Trey Kennard's bike through and through. Barsha has not changed a single thing on it since Trey rode it. Uh, Aaron, what do you have on the 17? Well, guys, when I spoke to Dan Bentley, the engine development guy from uh, Factory Honda, he had said that they found a mechanical failure. They weren't exactly sure what it was, but they believe it was an, an electrical gremlin is what they had called it. But they temporarily have fixed the problem. They're going to take the bike back to Florence and they're going to diagnose it further there. Wow, an electrical electrical gremlin. It, it, it you know. That's it was the, the bad we... gremlin. Obviously, you know, there's the nice one, the cuddly one. Gizmo. The gizmo is the good one. The gizmo didn't show up today. Hey, obviously. Well, okay, I'm not going to comment anymore because that's just showing how old we are. Let's talk about Barsha, who has no idea what movie we're talking about because he is, uh, what, I think 19 years old, one of the youngest riders in this 450 division, and only jumped up to this bike at our previous race at Unadilla. Has had a rough go of it in the 250 class this summer. So basically, out of the championship picture there, Honda needed a rider for their injured 450 uh, crew. It's like a new lease on life for this kid. Well, and that's, um, you know, well, let's uh, take a look at the uh, progressive hole shot, and uh, I'll finish my comment, because uh, on the 250 this year, Barsha by far had the most hole shots, seven. Oh, yeah. yep. The next closest was, uh, was another rider with two. So he's really good off the start. And that's what he's brought to this Honda team, is being able to put this Honda 450 up front off of the start, just like he's done here in this moto, and put him in a, in a position to win. Yeah, and Chad Reed, with a uh, bad start, he ends up going down and he take us through this, Jeff. Here's your progressive hole shot, and uh, Dungey would have started way to the left uh, on this gate. You see another rider stalled out, and as they funnel in this really tight vortex, Barsha, by the way, had the bad Barsha gate pick. Barsha was way on the outside because he had a bad pick with the DNF, and then uh, he comes flying around. And there's Chad Reed in the uh, foreground there, down on the ground. So well, the one thing we figured is if you had a bad gate pick here, there was no way you'd get a good start. Reed had the bad gate pick because he had a bad first moto. He went down. Dungeon didn't even get to the gate, but Barsha did the impossible. Pulled a start from the outside. That's the kind of starts this kid has gotten this year. He has been lightning out of the gate, and he might just carry it all the way to a moto win here on a rainy day at Southwick. Ready. Let's check in here on Ryan Dungey. He is your defending series champion. He is the man that won our first race earlier today. But this second race has been a complete disaster of no fault of his own, though. They had to change motors between races. They couldn't get the thing going. And the gate dropped, and the race started without him. He finally got the bike going, luckily, before the leader had completed the first lap. You're able to get it in the race as long as the leader has not completed lap one. They got the bike down to the line. Dungey started about, what, three quarters of a lap after the rest of the field, and he has now worked his way up to 
first place. And oh. that is amazing because if you're into the top 20, you're going to score points. And the way this series has gone, every point's going to count. I know he's going to take a huge hit considering the leader, Villapoto, is in fourth right now. And Dungey's going to lose a lot of points to him. But as Chattery always said, you got to be in it to win it. And every point Dungey counts is going to keep him in it. Yeah, and, and that's the point here. I mean, the message is to keep trying. Certain things are, are out of your control. Uh, for Ryan Dungey, this bike issue is out of his control. So he needs to do the best that he can do. And it started at such a disadvantage in this moto. And it's going to be so frustrating. You know, I mean, it's just heartbreaking to be out there trying to do this. And he knows the implications of, of this bad moto. But after this moto is over, we still have two more races, four more motos, you know, tons of racing. And I mean, in motocross, you just never know. I mean, you go back yep. to the to the 250 championship last year between Porcel and um, uh, Trey Kennard. Uh, just, you, you know, that whole thing went back and forth. And just when you thought that Porcel had it, he goes down, doesn't even finish either moto. Kennard takes the championship, you know, so. Let's uh, go down to Aaron, who has a report on one of those Massachusetts riders we saw who was running up front earlier today. Aaron? That's right. The uh, Massachusetts native, Robbie Marshall, is sitting here in the mechanics area being attended to by his mechanics and also the Asterix medical team. He has got so much sand in his eyes from losing his goggles out there. He literally could not see anymore. It was in a lot of pain when he came in. His whole body was tremoring. They are dousing him with water, trying to rinse all the sand out at this moment. Yeah, and he was running in the top 10. Meanwhile, if you uh, watch the action right now, you're going to think to yourself, Dungey is battling for the lead. Because check this out. Here comes your leader, Barsha, and he's actually closing in on uh, the top 20. Lap of those guys, and that would mean he's going to close in on Dungey. Here's the keys to the race, by the way, brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Jeff, what do you need to do here at Southwick to go fast? Well, uh, Barsha somehow, with that bad gate pick, uh, managed to get a good start. He certainly is keeping his momentum going, and uh, he's he's got a great technique right now, right, and keeping uh, clear vision. I mean, we just seen Robbie Marshall having problems, and and it's not like a manufacturer thing. I mean, the conditions are so bad and so difficult that if you can be out front like Dun or like Barsha is right now, yeah. you you're not going to get as much roost on your goggles because you're not battling with the guy, except for the lap riders. And uh, most of the time, you're going to go past those guys at a pretty good click anyway. And uh, so you keep your goggles clear. And if you can keep your goggles on the whole moto, that's a huge advantage over the rider that has to take his goggles off because uh, the tear off and the roll off system fails. So Marsha continues to lead over great and great ride for him. Uh, he is in second on uh, the Muscle Toyota Yamaha, Metcalf third, Villapoto trying to ride consistent in fourth, but got a rider down here in a precarious position. Or, this is uh, right at the finish line. Yeah. And luckily the rider is off the track, but the rider's got to watch the bike. There is Weimer going by on the number uh, in the number five spot. Then it's Alessi Smith. Dowd has climbed up to eighth. Sewell and Chisholm, who's back in action today after some injuries, riding out the top ten on one of the wildest days we've seen on a motocross track in quite some time. Justin Barsha continues to lead. I don't even know what story we should cover first here. Round 10 of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. Justin Barsha is your leader in this moto. But in motocross, you have to be consistent in two races in one afternoon to win the overall for the day. The bad news for Barsha, he was running third in our first moto until his bike broke. So he's going to go did not finish and first for his two scores today. Yeah, which, so. is, which is amazing because uh, his gate pick with the DNF in Moto 1 was horrible, but he absolutely hammered the throttle off that Honda, off the start, and uh, uh, was inside of the top five, which is just an amazing gate. And trouble here for the 800 of Mike Alessi, Jeff. Take us through what happened to Alessi, who was running uh, in sixth place. Oh. Alessi coming down through, uh, you can see the ruts just coming down through here everywhere. and. I mean, some of them go back and forth, and uh, they just ate him up. Now, Mike's a pretty good mud rider, so for him to make a, a big mistake, you also notice that he didn't have his goggles on. Uh, that definitely attributed to uh, his lack of vision and lack of judgment there. So, okay, Barsha 
Might win this second moto, but he had a bad moto one. So scratch him from contention for the so, overall. Our so first what's moto the story winner, for let, the let's overall? Let's explain this. Our first moto winner, Ryan Dungey, couldn't get his bike going in moto two. He's coming through traffic now. He's in 13th. So scratch Dungey from a chance to win the overall today with a first and a 13th. The man who stands to possibly win the overall right now is Brett Metcalf, third in moto one. He has just made the pass on Justin Brayton to take over second. If he goes 3-2, he should edge Ryan Villapoto, who is looking at a second in Moto 1 and a fourth in this Moto 2. There's Brayton, the third place rider on the number 10. Brett Metcalf could be in position to win the overall. And Jeff, you and I talked about it while we're at the break. If anyone deserves to win Southwick under these conditions, it is Brett Metcalf. This track owes him one big time. It certainly does. One year ago in Moto One, Brett Metcalf has the ride of his life going, has got Dungy handled in Moto One and runs out of gas with a quarter of a lap to go before the finish. Just a heartbreaking moment for our friend Brett Metcalf. But he comes back on a track that he really enjoys, says he loves the sand, loves it when it gets rough and nasty like this, and is uh, just putting in a spectacular performance uh, with a third in the first moto, possibly a second here in the second moto, which would give him his first ever AMA overall win, which it's going to be a huge moment. Little less than three laps to go. If, and let's uh, stay tuned to see if he can pull this off. Yeah, well, it's uh, mixed emotions then for rock star Makita Suzuki because Dungey, a heartbreak for him, not getting that bike going in the second moto as the team worked feverishly. He's going to lose a bunch of points. But on the other hand, Metcalf, his teammate, might win the race. Let's check out Villapoto here, who yeah, he's running about, in fourth, just yeah, trying to collect points. Yeah, you talk about bittersweet for Suzuki. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're glad to see Metcalf win, but they're still not going to be too pumped when this day is over, but Dungey's doing a good job. He's up to 12th. He won't lose too many points, actually, to Villapoto. Yeah, that's just what I was going to mention is uh, last year we had that situation with Metcalf and Short who were battling, uh, and they all, you know, when it all went down, he didn't end up losing that many points because of the effort. I'm talking about Short. Yeah, so uh, Dungey in 12th and looking to make more moves. Trying to figure out, was that Ben LeMay, the 11th place rider? Yes, it was. So Dungey has made another pass. What an effort in the sand, the mud, the rain on a bike that he's probably not sure what was right or what was wrong with it. He has done nothing but just nothing else but just dig down deep. He'll ask questions when the race is over. This is one of the all-time hero efforts to try to score any points at all. And now that he is in 11th, I believe just scored 10 points for that. Villapoto. Correct. Uh, in fourth, I believe he get 18. The Villapoto's only going to make up eight points on him if it ends like this, and Dungey gained three on him in the first moto, so it'll only be a five-point swing at the end of the day. Way to salvage it for Dungey, and there's still two laps to go. Yeah, but for Dungey, uh, he had just made his way past uh, LeMay, and it's not that far. Chisholm is in 10th, and uh, Sewell, uh, Shane Sewell is in ninth, and Dowd's in eighth, and all three of those riders are fairly close to where Dungey is right now. And you never know if one of those riders might mistake Dungey as being the leader, right? So he uh -huh. comes by, you know, there's... Uh, Good point. Yeah, because Dungey's in similar track position, actually, to Barsha, who is your race leader. So, yeah, they might think, well, Dungey's fast guy. Maybe he's leading the race. Maybe I'm going to lap down. So Chisholm, this is Chisholm right here in front of us, I believe, wow. on the Yamaha. Dungey trying to get into the top 10 after not even starting yep. this race. The leader had nearly completed an entire lap before they finally got the bike fixed and down to the start. And then Dungey took off. And here he is making the move on Chisholm. And that's, that's... going to put Ryan Dungey into the top 10. Are you kidding me? It's uh, <laughs> The effort that he's putting out is <laughs> I, it's just giving me goosebumps right now to see him charging this hard and to still working this hard and to be this determined and to just not give up in this situation. And by the way, we go back two years ago, there's Les Smith on the 44. He is battling it out with John Dowd. These guys are not too far for in front of Dungey with a lap and a half to go. Here comes Dungey challenging Smith now, Smith. trying to make up another spot. Smith dropped back to ninth on that lap and Dungey this is going to put uh, this pass will put Dungey in the ninth place unbelievable so Dungey has literally passed 31 riders because everyone had started the race before he did he has gone through 31 riders sandblasted all the way I can't even imagine what he can see at all he's managed to keep the goggles on the whole time they've got to be covered 
Still probably get a little sand in the eyes. Hey, Jason, Sewell was only a couple of seconds ahead. There he is. This is Shane Sewell in eighth. Dungeon eighth trying place. to make a move on Check him. it off. Unbelievable. We go back to our leader, Justin Barsha. This will be his first ever Moto win on a 450. It's kind of fitting because he got his first win on a 250 at this track at all or ever at this track. So this place is very good to him. He's going to think about what might have been as far as the overall if his bike had made it to the finish in the first moto. But it's an equal opportunity event here. Even Ryan Dungey, he can't curse his bad luck at Southwick too bad because we go back to 2009 when he had a points deficit in the 250 class on Christophe Porcel. And it was Porcel who had the bike problems in the sand. And Dungey took advantage of that. So what South Southwick giveth, it taketh away. And no one understands that better than Justin Barsha, who had a third place finish in the first race, ripped from his hands due to bad luck. And he responds in Moto2 and is looking for a victory on the last lap. The people cheering him on. They are the hardest of hardcore motocross fans. We have a hurricane sweeping through here. But they're going to stick around to cheer a local product from upstate New York, Justin Barsha. Going to make some history here with his first 450 class moto win. And these people are pumped. A quarter a lap to go for Barsha. That's going to mean about a half a lap to go for uh, Ryan Dungey, who we believe still is an eighth. And the next rider on the list for him would be John Dowd, local boy, <laughs> local, local man, man <laughs> father of two. Uh, but when you look at the points, the effort that Dungey has put in, if Dungey finishes eighth, and uh, Villapoto in fourth. That's only a five point difference towards the championship. Yeah, and Dungey yeah. made up three points on him in the first moto. It's almost a wash. Pardon the pun on a day with a lot of rain and mud. Dungey up to seventh, actually, timing and scoring is telling us at this point. Unbelievable. Meanwhile, let's focus on this. The kid does it. Justin Barsha, we talk quite a bit of. He is not intimidated at all by the superstars of the 450 division, and he is going to beat them in a rough, rugged, and muddy Southwick moto number two. Through the eye, our Hurricane Irene, Justin Barsha wins his first ever 450 moto here at Southwick. We'll talk to a very happy winner when we return. This event will start it out with the drama in moto number one. And it was drama for Justin Barsha, who was uh, riding well in third. There's Chad Reed. He goes out with mechanical troubles, running fourth. Barsha, who was running third, he goes out in mechanical troubles as well. There's Reed. You can basically scratch him from championship contention. And then Reed ran into trouble in moto two as well as bike. Dungey takes the first moto win. So all the luck is shining on the number one until they can't get his bike running for the second moto. Apparently, they had a problem at the end of moto one. They got swapped the bike the to the finish, swapped the engine out, but couldn't do it in time. The gate dropped without Dungey. There's Dungey walking around back there. Then, Justin Barsha had a terrible gate pick because of the bad finish in moto one. Somehow grabs the whole shot. There is Reed on the number 22, down in the first turn. Dungey joins the race late and miraculously starting the race three quarters of the lap down with Rally to finish seven. Reed, meanwhile, ran into trouble with his bike again, so he finishes neither moto today. Justin Barsha wins the moto. And through all that, Ryan Villapoto extends his points lead, and Brett Metcalf wins the overall. Can you keep track of all that? We'll try to help you out a little bit with our results here in moto two. Barsha the winner, Metcalf by virtue of that second place finish, and a third in moto one will win the overall. More on that later. Just focus on that top 10 and notice that Villapoto only finished three spots ahead of Dungey when it was all said and done. And that right he, there, yeah. that ride by Ryan Dungey to work his way up to seven. Might have saved the season. Let's go down to Barsha on the podium with Aaron. Only his second round in the 450 class and you managed to come out on top. Justin, what did you do and how did you manage to pull this off in such a short period of time? Honestly, I have no idea. The first moto was just some bad luck and I knew I could ride the sand good. This is my favorite place and I just went out there far outside, got a great start, charged the whole time, the whole Honda team, the Geico, everyone, they did so great today and all my mechanics, thanks a lot. It was off to a rough start today, but congratulations on having the victory. Well, who knows? It could have been an overall for Barsha, but his bike ran into trouble in moto number one, but pretty much everybody had bike troubles today, so you can't really blame that on the teams or the equipment. Mother Nature dominated this one. All right, we're going to take a break here and try to sort this all out. Villapoto adding a few points to his lead over Dungey. Brett Metcalf going to celebrate his first ever overall. 
crazy stuff here at Southwick. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship Rockstar Energy Drink National at Southwick. And poetic justice for Brent Metcalf, who had a win ripped from his hands last year when his bike ran out of gas. He wins the overall here in 2011. One of the few riders who was able to be consistent on a very rough day today. By virtue of 3-2 scores, he is your overall winner. And Dungey salvaged the podium. Hey, let's send it down to Aaron on the podium with Brett Metcalf. Not only is it his very first overall, but his dad is here for your first race of the season. Brett, not only did you accomplish that overall, but in front of your dad. Where does this moment rank, and is this all about redemption coming in from all the heartbreak you've had here? Oh, for my motocross career, it's the, it's the highlight, for sure. I mean, it's been eight, eight years in the U.S. trying to get a win, and oh, this is incredible. You know, after last year's heartbreak, this makes up for it. Just thanks to Rockstar Makita Suzuki, Thor Pass Unlimited, my whole family, my wife, everybody that's helped. And uh, that's just hard work, dedication, motivation. Stay at it, and it happens. Congratulations on all your hard work paying off today. What more do you need to say to that for Metcalf? Meanwhile, we mentioned Dungey salvaging the podium. He came in down by seven points. He leaves down by eight. You'd almost not even know all the trouble that he went through today because he didn't lose any points. Reed, meanwhile, by not finishing either moto, is way back in the series. Let's send it back down to Aaron. What a day for Ryan Villapoto. Ryan, you still have that red plate. Chaos was going on around you. What was going through your mind? And is this the point where you can start to smile a bit, or do you know that anything can still happen? No, I mean, anything can happen. Just, you know, it's, it's a bummer for Ryan. <clears throat> you know, as for myself, I, you know, I don't want to win it that way, but, <clears throat> you know, it's racing and stuff happens, and, and definitely I got given a gift today. Um, you know, I was just trying to get through that moto and, uh, you know, try to conserve the bike and, and, and make it through it to the checkered flag so we'll go to these last two rounds and for sure i need to i need to be on it i need to beat him so um you know we'll see what we can do congratulations on a solid effort and ryan dungy congratulations on salvaging so many points your heart rate must have been through the roof before that moto had even started and then you had to play catch up are you happy with everything and how it turned out considering and i uh i really don't know there's so many mixed emotions right now it's uh it's kind of hard you know one minute I didn't even know I was think I was going to ride. I thought I was done going back to the pits. Over the hill he comes and I uh, hop on the bike. And at that point, you know, it's just points and uh, salvaging and dam limited to damage. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't want anybody to take away from uh, my team. You know, it, it's teams that it's because we finished in seventh and gained points. And that's the difference of finishing the moto, not even a finishing or starting. And uh, Team Rockstar, Miki Zuki, all the mechanics, my, my you know, Mike, my, my mechanic and uh, it's, uh, hey, there's four races left, and uh, it's not impossible. And I'm just glad we could get out there and pick some guys off and walk away safe. This championship is far from over, guys. September 11th, the NFL regular season begins with a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, the Falcons take on the Bears in Chicago as two of the NFC's best go head to head. Then it's the Giants taking on their rivals, the Redskins in Washington, D.C., or other regional action. Coverage begins September 11th, that's Sunday, with the Built for Tough Fox to NFL pregame show. That's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Check out local listings for the games in your area. Jeff, no games out here. This is the real deal. Ryan Man. Dungey salvages season. Good work. Uh, pra praising his team, actually. Yeah, and, and uh, that, that was a big statement by Ryan, and that was a big ride for him to come out and uh, to not give up, not just to just you know walk away. The bike showed up. He put in an incredible effort. Loses one point on the day. Eight points behind in the championship. Villapoto plays it clean, but uh, man. Hey, speaking of not giving up, how about Brett Metcalf finally getting his win after nearly a decade?